Hello, and welcome to Now You're Cooking with Gas. This video is about firing full auto and using ammunition. To start, as usual, we're going to create an ammo attribute. I'm going to copy a damage multi here. I'm going to click here and hit Control F3. So now damage multi is my, uh, my search. I'm just going to call it ammo. Ammo. Going to set up a default value of 100. Set up the usual replication stuff. With some more ammo. And compile and run the editor. Next, I'm going to refactor the way uh, GA fire ability works and turn it into a base class. So in the last video, we left the character set to the fire version. I'm just going to switch that back to physical. Delete both of these. I'm rename this one to base. And clean it up. First, we're going to save the character by promoting that to a variable. Going to make a function for this, make a spec. Get the character here, make sure it's a validated get. And we're going to return that value. This is a gameplay effect spec handle. Add a return node.
the next will commit. Going to make another function fire. After it has fired, we need to check whether it's an auto weapon or attack. I'm going to hold down B, click, make a branch. In the case that it's not a full auto, we can just call end ability. As a reminder, end ability has to uh, happen at the end of any path. So when this is true, we're going to use the wait to input release. So assuming left click is what you're using, hitting left click will start this gameplay ability and then releasing will uh, go here. So on release again, we just want to end ability. to remove the uh, projectile spawning. Put that in the fire function. Which needs to call make spec. Which will be passed to the projectile. We're also going to make the projectile a variable. So this will be the projectile class. Uh, we're going to change it from actor to our base projectile, which is BP projectile. Hover the mouse on it, and then you can go and click class reference. I do want to change the variable tag, which is what well, we'll get that back. Without the class being set to a specific type, you can't use uh, expose on spawn variables. All right, so while we're holding down the button, we're going to be calling task wait delay. This will wait for a specific amount of time. When that time is uh, ended, then it will uh, we'll go here. So in here, we're going to call commit again. Commit ability is the function that applies the cost to a uh, gameplay ability. So again, we need to call fire. And then we can loop back here. The delay that we're going to use will also be a variable. Going to call this rate of fire. Personal preference is rate of fire is a value that is 
the number of attacks per second. So for example, if you had five attacks per second, the rate of fire being five, the time would then be one divided by. So we need a divide node. It will be one divided by the rate of fire. Now you would also probably want to put log logic in here so that rate of fire is always above zero. Which also means I'm not going to put the check in for uh, brevity, but I'm going to set the default value above zero. So that'd be one, uh, one projectile per second. So the base class does not need a tag. And we can create child. We'll call this one fizz. Let's duplicate this twice. Fire. Acid. And then we'll go in and set these uh, values up. I'm just adding the damage type tags like I did in the last video. Make sure that the player is now pointing to the Fizz one inside of the base. All right, and we can see that it is uh, still working. I hold down the button, nothing's happening. I click it multiple times, it shoots. So now if I switch this to full auto, and I set the rate of fire up to five. Hold down the button. You see it's shooting. Well, it's a message spam. Incidentally, I'm going to remove that from here. So now that full auto is working, I can add ammunition. And the way ammunition works is in your gameplay ability, I'll add this to the base, there is a cost gameplay effect class here. So what this means is when commit is called, it's applying this gameplay effect. So the way the gameplay effect works is that it will be an instant gameplay effect, which reduces ammo. Uh, you can use the same thing if you were going to have charges for like a uh, different types of ability. I'm just going to call this GE cost ammo. It's just going to be a modifier on the ammo attribute with a negative one value. and added to the GA. I'm going to add it to the HUD, otherwise we wouldn't know that it was going down. In this case, I will just add a text value down here. Make sure that it is a variable.
and we can bind the text. Here we can get the player pawn. Get ability system component. Make sure it's valid. And get a float attribute. This will be ammo. Auto conversion nodes and uh, blueprints are very handy. We can see we have 100 ammo. When we start firing, it goes down. And one other thing to test is to make sure that it's not firing when there's no ammo. Uh, I realized that I set the ammo to 100, and that takes a really long time at 5 per second. So I'm going to go into the default attributes for the player here and just add one for ammo. And we'll set it to 10. See that when it hits zero, it just keeps firing. However, if I let go and I click again, it's doing nothing. The reason this is is because in the game playability, the base version, not the fizz version, in the first call to commit, the cost gameplay effect class, if it if it's at zero. The value that it's trying to reduce, it will actually just call end ability itself. However, it doesn't seem to be doing that here. So in this case, we want to call make another branch dependent on the return value. And if that fails, we call end ability. And then once it hits zero, then that that commit call will return false, and we can uh, we can end ability. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video and would like to see more, you know what to do. If you have suggestions on future content or abilities you would like to see, let me know down below.